Those of you who live in small towns, what is the current local controversy all about? Nothing current but I have a great one from 5 years ago, so we had a guy who was quite the libertarian. He owned a gun store in town and pretty much kept to himself. He will be known as Lib Guy. The problem started when he decided to have chickens for his own eggs but he lived within the city proper which had a newer against farm animals within the city. This is a rural tarming area living, one of the city council members, he shall be known as a hole, discovered he had chickens a few weeks after he got them and the city sent him a letter telling him he had to get rid of them. Well, he was not going to go down without a fight. So he spent some time looking into things and discovered the a-hole who reported him lived within the city and he also had chickens. Well, this of course caused a bit of a scandal. The city ended up claiming there was a grandfather Klaus for anyone who had Levenlac within the city prior to the rule change 17 years ago. The problem with that was that clause applied to the a-hole's father, not the a-hole who lived at the same address needless to say, the war was on a couple of weeks go by and the town cops are messing with Libguai over petty shit, Libguai somehow gels a recording of a-hole calling the police and lying to them about what Libguai was doing. Police now want to charge Libguai for some absurd ridiculous recording law that really does not a police since it was someone with the police debt who gave him the lip not that he stole it. This gets blown up to the point where the bigger city's news crews are now showing up to city council meetings that are being called to address this issue. These marlings are gelling absurdly blown out of proportion and in all honesty somewhat slimy and jicky in how the city is handling it. Libguai subpoenas the city council emails to show. There was a concerted effort to fuck with him and cover for a hole. Well in the course of getting the emails it was discovered that there was a sexling issue going on between three of the city council members. LMAO. Believe me when I say this did not involve people that would be considered sexy. All three, two women, and one male, were married, 200 pounds plus, and in their 50 mean emails about double dildos, pegging, swinging etc. It was hilarious. In the end, the lip guy got the last laugh he laughed in chickens but found a loophole where he could actually own llamas in the city since they were not considered livestock so he put up a fence all around his yard, ugly chicken wire fence, just tall enough so the llamas could not get out by jumping. People actually would go by walking their dogs and pet the llamas the problem though was that llamas shit like cows and its slinks in such a small enclosure. This went in for about a year until he sold his house and moved, it stunk for at least a block around his property and he lived right behind the town's grocery store. Two of the council members involved gal divorced over the sexting issue and the third one sold her bar because of it. This was the infamous chicken scandal that plagued my town of 4k for 3 years. What do you miss the most from pre-covid? As a person who works nights, stores and restaurants that are open late. I used to be able to get out of work at whatever hour and have a dozen different grocery stores and fast food restaurants I could stop at on the way home, and now two years after the pandemic have only one or two, and sometimes they'll be closed anyway for whatever reason. Same here there was a 21 hour diner right by my house and I'd just go out 5pm before work, or am on nights off when I didn't feel like cooking all kinds of interesting people were there and the food was great. Also now basically all the stores close at 9pm and so if I'm not right on my errands game when I wake up I miss it. I miss going to late night movies quilt free loo, technically I can still go but it's just not the same of course. This was my biggest adjustment at first. Not because of work schedules, but I had just moved, and because I'm a night owl and my family is not, I'd go late late night shopping to avoid, well, people, lol. Not in an antisocial way, just in a this is a chore I must complete, let me find the path of least resistance kind of way, and midnight Kroger runs resulted in a much lower stress shopping experience for me. End of the day, the revised hours basically just restricted my ability to shop while the stokers do their job. Which I completely understand, if the revised schedule allows folks to get their job done more effectively, power to them if they're adjusted accordingly, and while I might miss out on an extra hour of family time each week, there are literally 1000s of families whose lives are impacted for the better. Fun fact if you made it this far grocery stores absolutely pander to their audiences when it comes to their music selection weekend evenings seem to be taken over by the same party anthem music I used to club to in the mid aughts and 20 teens. Late weekday nights typically include the likes of Taylor and Blues Traveler. If you're re-intentional about your weekly shopping trip, you can actually make it feel less of a chore. Yee, AirPods and a curated playlist have their place, but being the only guy dancing around the granola aisle to the music playing through the entire store is an experience everyone should have at least once. What is an addiction that the world is just okay with? Social media. This might be too recent to have cause real waves but I am pretty sure that in a couple of years you'll have to accept the consequences every time you log in. A few years later social media sites will all have to have standard khaki peak sites and big bold horrifying message everywhere. 
I really believe that in a few years, social media login pages will have warnings like cigarette packs in Canada. Warning, the use of these sites has been linked to depression, anxiety, insomnia. Please enter at your risk. Or something to that effect. Enter at your risk makes it sound like a dungeon. Instagram is mostly mine. Also TikTok, Snapchat, prime firms and brands, own a few. Twitter, YouTube, Facebook too. All of these are mine and more plots and ploys and plans in store. When my list is all complete. All together, press delete. Teachers of Reddit, what was the worst thing you had to confiscate from a student? So this was less confiscated and more this student ended up just leaving this in my room and we had to throw it away, but it was certainly weird and is among my favorite things. I have a student this year who has brought some interesting things in. He's in 7th grade and this is usually beyond the age students play show and tell to begin with. Things included, a Russian nesting doll of household items, lunch boxes, crayon bags, a plastic egg and many things in between 8 or 9 total, leading to a paper with Joe Biden written on it, and a jar of other people's hair, he was asking his teachers to add to it. This somehow beats both. Over the course of what feels like a week, this student had been collecting cherry tomatoes at lunch and saving them. Eventually, he had a handful of them. He named each one. He drew a face of each. He had created a family of tomatoes. He even began dressing them in tape created safety seats. Only the children tomatoes though. He even had a French fry boat for a vehicle to carry his tomato family to each class. Eventually he left it in our class over weekend and the tomatoes went bad. We had to toss them. He asked us not to call TPS on him, tomato protective services. I love this kid. I love this. My kids had a cantaloupe up that they named Jeffrey and brought camping with us. I'm so glad it was just the one and not a whole cantaloupe family. Which famous saying isn't really true in your opinion? In Poland we have a stupid saying that goes only the guilty one explains himself. Don't know if there's an English equivalent. Best I can think of isn't really a saying or common phrase but you shouldn't be nervous unless you have something to hide. It's typically used in dramatic media to pin the blame on someone for something when they may just be nervous because they're in an unfamiliar environment and that naturally makes someone uncomfortable. Not to mention they are usually being interrogated in order to get them to confess to something even if they didn't do it. Edit. Hey everyone, I get it, there are several better ways to say what I said. You can stop replying with the same three things. Please. What is a red flag from an employer that people might not immediately recognize as a red flag? When an employee quits or gets fired from the job and the company doesn't hire anyone new to replace them. It can be hard to tell as a red flag at first, but the temporary workload they added to your own over that was left over after the person left, slowly becomes your new permanent workload, without any changes to your pay or benefits to compensate for the additional tasks. The further out it goes without the position being filled, the larger and more obvious the red flag becomes. This happened to me exactly. In July we had a guy leave. Had a new guy come in from another division to take over, but here it is 6 months later and I'm still covering the former employee's workload as well as my already existing workload. I asked for a raise last month and I was told you need to take more responsibility before you are eligible for a raise. I applied to other companies and am getting offers for 60% more right off the bat. You suddenly traveled back 100,000 years to a cave that will eventually be discovered by archaeologists, what do you write on the wall to mess with them? My sincerest apologies to Mr. Hawking for missing his party. It appears I overshot. This really should be the number one answer. It's not even lying or trying to trick the archaeologists. It's just stating a fact in the most hilarious way posse. Then the question becomes, is this cave found discovered after Hawking's party or before? If it is discovered before Hawking threw his party, would he have been made aware of the writing note and have changed his party to something else? Turning it into some sort of self-fulfilling prophecy sort of thing. Note Nexus event TVA would show up. You know, the Tennessee Valley Authority really have amassed too much power. This is exactly what I thought every time the TVA was mentioned in Loki. You can have 1 billion dollars but you can never get drunk or high again. Are you interested? Why or why not? Obviously yes. Bring it down to 100k or something and then you might get some interesting answers. A billion dollars is ridiculous. Nothing I wouldn't do for that kind of money. The number is always too high. I used to have a co-worker that would ask question like, would you suck a dick for a billion dollars you would be surprised when I said absolutely. A billion dollars would a lot of mouthwash and silence, 